So hopefully you guys can see me okay and hear me okay. And I'm in the bathroom. So this is the first time I actually do the tutorial where you guys see me. And I am looking a little rough, but I wanted to show you the um, hair dye. So I'm looking a little rough. I ain't got no makeup on, no nothing on. Because I want to show you how I dye my hair. Just, you know, step by step. So I will show you guys how I mix my um, dye and the products that I use. So what I'm using for this uh, hair dye is um, Color Brilliance by Ion. And it is um, permanent hair dye. It is called Dark Intense Red Blonde. Hopefully you guys can see it there. It's number 6IR-66.66. Um, and it is resistant gray coverage. I don't have any grays. I'm but yeah, you're going to need your hair dye. I particularly have been using this brand for many, many, many years now. Um, and it's work completely fine with me. Now you're also going to need your developer. And I use it by the same brand. You can also use another brand developer. I just like how this one works. Um, and it is a 30. Remember, the higher the number of the developer, the lighter the color is going to look. The lower number of the developer the darker it's going to look. So I like mine in between, so that's why I get a 30. Um, and it's also for sensitive scalp. So it's not going to burn as much as other mixes will burn. You're also going to need a mixing cup. And my mixing cup looks like this. As you can see at the bottom, it has the um, measuring and hopefully the light will capture this here on the side you also have measuring that way it's easier when you go and mix your dye and your developer now you're also going to need a brush or something to do it this one um, is fairly cheap if you go to Sally's Beauty Supply all these um, things that I've shown you so far I've gotten at Sally's Beauty Supply and then when I wash my hair I give myself a treatment right after that way you know it locks in the moisture and it helps right after this one is called the repair solutions also by ion and it says strength and moisturizes weak and damaged hair 100% vegan um, so if you're a vegan, this is really good for you. And even if you're not, this stuff really works. And they have many solutions. Um, but I use, I just use this because right after a dye, regardless what dye you use, your hair is going to damage, whether a little bit or a lot. Um, I personally think that Ion doesn't damage my hair as much as other brands do. So I just... Um, use a treatment right after when I'm washing to dye off my hair and I go to condition it this is what I use also you want to make sure that you have gloves handy that way you won't stain your hands when you're doing your um your dye because your hands will stain and depending on the dye if you use it with your fingers you'll actually get like blister bubbles that itch a lot because of the dye. So you want to make sure that to take care of your hands, you use a pair of gloves. Now I will say to mix, I do everything by like eye. I don't measure anything just because I'm already so used to doing it. Now in this package, and I suggest if you're trying to dye your hair the same color, um, like repeatedly, you either want to make sure you keep um, the box or you remember the number. That way you won't change your color when you're about to do your um, retouch. But inside the box, of course, it comes with the instructions. 
in English and in Spanish. Um, I won't really go into any details because every brand has different instructions or whatnot. But if this is your first time dyeing your hair, you always make sure that you do your 48 to or 24 to 48 hour test. That way, you know that you're not allergic to the product. I'm not allergic to this product. If you have not used this product, I strongly suggest you do it just in case. Um, so this is what the dye looks like. It comes in a metal kind of squeeze tube. And I'm going to show you how to mix it. But before I do, if you're doing um, a short hair touch-up or a root touch-up, whatever, you only need three-fourths of the tube. And they actually come, like, numbered. Um, or actually a fourth. It's actually, yeah. You actually need a fourth of the tube, which is the first little chunk of it. If you're doing a retouch on a long hair, you want half of the tube. And if you're dyeing your whole entire head, you want the whole entire tube, okay? So, when you unscrew it, it's it has the metal or aluminum thing you turn the cap around and that's how you open it as you can see there's the die so you grab your mixing bowl and you squeeze it from top to bottom onto the mixing bowl Once you get to this part right here, you still have dye in there, believe it or not. And I like to roll my um, tube as I go. That way I know I'm not leaving any type of dye in there. So what I do for this, when it's like this, I just squeeze up here and bring this part down. Like this. And you can see the dye coming out, hopefully. You see all that? That would have been dye that would have stayed in that packaging and you can use it. Okay. So now, the developer. Like I said, it's a 30 um, developer. But yeah, let's mix it in. As you can see, I want to stop right here and show you guys. As you can see here, if you spread it, you see that it's not silky. Like it has bumps. So that's how, if you're doing it by eye, that's how you know you're going to need more developer. So you just want to grab a little bit more of your developer. And you want to keep on mixing until you get a silky no bumps consistency in your dye. Okay, as you can see here, after mixing, when you like move it around, it has no bumps, it's silky. That's basically the consistency that you want to have. You don't want it too runny, you don't want it too hard, you want it just in the middle, you know? You want it like a cream. Okay, so now that you guys seen the video of how I mix and all the products that I use, I'll be going into details on what I do. Okay, so first, first things first, you want to make sure that you have a shirt that you really don't care if you mess it up or not. You want to have your mix done. As you can see here, it's done and it's beginning to get its color. If you mix it, it's going to look a little different. Um, you want to make sure that your hair is completely untangled. Um, if you brush it before, just make sure you don't touch your scalp because it can get irritated. Um, and just to recap, the products that I used were my dye from Ion. And my developer, 
also from Ion. You want to make sure that you also have um, a couple clips to clip up your hair whenever you're done dyeing it or before, you know, when you separate it. Um, you also want to make sure that you have some gloves. That way you won't stain your fingers. And you want to try to keep it as clean as possible. Um, you can use petroleum jelly. You can use Vaseline, which is basically the same thing. Um, I don't have either or, so I can use either hair food, um, and it's basically like a greasy substance that, you know, you put in your hair to keep it from breaking or whatnot. You can also use, um, coconut oil, and this is by Blue Magic. Um, this one is by... Lusty Professionals, and I think I'm going to use the coconut oil just because it has oils in it. And basically what you want to do is you want to get the perimeter of your face and your ears covered. That way, when you put on your dye, you won't stain your skin. You grab a little bit of it, and you work it around. Okay, so now that you have that on, as you can see, my forehead and everything is looking pretty greasy. I didn't do the back just because usually when I dye my hair, I keep it down for a pretty long time before I wash it again. So even if my skin on the back is a little stained, I really ain't got no problem with it. So next, you want to make sure that, like I said, wear a shirt that you really don't care about staining. You want to put on your gloves. If you have nails on... You know they will stain and if you're doing it without gloves and it's permanent dye or semi-permanent whatever the case may be your skin can get irritated and you can actually get little bubbles in your skin and they really do hurt um i did it once and it did really hurt so you want to make sure that you put your gloves on and you can do this before putting your gloves on or after. Um, I want to go into details. A lot of people say that permanent dye, um, you get a line whenever you go and dye your hair again. I've been using this product for a really long time. It has not happened to me. I don't know if different hair colors do it or what the case may be. But I don't get a line wherever it transitions from my growth to my hair. As you can see right here, this much is growth. And back here, I have a different dye with highlights that I did on myself. And of course, they look raggedy right now. But I'll put a picture of what it looked like now. Okay, so now that you guys seen the several pictures, um, that's what it looked like. And like I said, here is as much as growth that I have. So that's why I'm dyeing my hair completely. Um, that way I can take out the highlights or as much as the highlights as I can and dye it all one color. Um, so you want to make sure that you divide your hair. So I'm going to take it out. And like I said, you want to make sure that you have it as brushed as possible without, you know, brushing your scalp. So basically what I do is I divide the middle and of course I ain't got my comb here with me that's the one thing I kind of forgot so I'll just use the back of the brush also you want to make sure that when you dye your hair it is um, dirty that way you can wash it and take out all the dye all at once as you can see here, you can kind of see some of the highlights of before. My hair is looking so nasty right now. So I clip one side. And I clip the other side. Now you may be asking, well, she's about to dye her hair. Why is she clipping both sides? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you get all the perimeter around your head. 
So I dip my brush in a little bit. You want to make sure that you only get a little bit so you won't, you know, go overboard and take it out to your skin where you don't want it. So you dip a little bit. And I'm going to look at my mirror. <laughs> you want to brush it right where you're, right onto your hairline. So you probably seen the mess that I did in the back of my head. That's of course I wasn't using a mirror. Um, I don't suggest it, but hey, what can I do? Okay, so basically now what I do is I grab like a section of the section that I pulled. And I usually start at the bottom and work my way up. So I grab a section about this big. Hopefully you guys can see that and I'm not off camera. Um, and then I put my hair back up. I grab again a little bit of the dye. And I feel for my, you know, for my scalp. And I put the brush there like this and then I brush down as much as I can and upwards that way I know I get all my scalp and in between hopefully you guys can see that okay and then I grab a little bit more and I go from the tip of my hair all the way up so starting at the tip and I work my way up. Now I really don't focus that much on on that right now because usually at the end I have enough dye to go around and make sure that everything else is covered. But that's mainly what you want to, well, at least what I do. So again, I grab another chunk of hair, not that big. Put everything else up. And this one's kind of big, so I'm just going to divide that. And again, where you feel into your scalp, you put on dye. And again, from tips, and work your way up. You want to make sure that most of your hair is coated with the dye. But like I said, at the end, you should have a little bit of product left to make sure that all your hair is actually covered. So, I'm going to show you one last time. Hopefully you guys can actually capture what I'm doing. And again, from tips and work my way up. So it should, you know, be looking like this and I'm going to do most of my hair and then show you when I'm at the top so I can actually know that you guys are seeing what I'm doing.
Okay, so now that your hair is completely dyed, you want to grab just a little bit of what you got left, rub it in your hands and rub your hair with it. Okay, so now you guys have a little bit on your thing. And I know this may not be, or a lot of people may have uh, criticism about this. But I'm going to take this, and because my eyebrows are darker than my hair. So I'm going to take a little bit of my finger, and I'm going to do it on my eyebrows. Once you have everything clipped up, um, you want to wait anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. I usually just count and anywhere from 45 minutes to 50 minutes. Now the ones on my eyebrows I do take within 20 minutes of them being there just in case. Um, and I've done this before and my eyebrows or my hair or my skin has never fallen off. If you don't feel that it's secure or if you feel that it's dangerous, don't do it. Um, it's just personal, personal preference. So I'll come back once the 45 minutes are over. Okay, so 50 minutes approximately have went by. And as you can see, my hair is way darker than when we started. <laughs> um... So I am going to, I may still have a couple highlights that show throughout my hair, but um, I'm really not concerned about that. So I am going to wash and condition my hair. Now, I'm not going to show you how I do that, that would be kind of awkward, but um, when you have any type of dye in your hair, and this is like a tip, for example, reds wash off your hair really, really quickly. Even when they're permanent, they wash off a bit. Um, blacks turn brown, etc., etc. As you all may know, every single time you wash your hair, the dye runs down. What you want to do is you want to take a bath, whatever, do what you got to do. When you wash your hair, you want to try to wash your hair in the coldest water that you can stand in your hair. That basically seals in or closes the pores and the dye won't run down as quickly as if you would do it with um, warm water. So that's a good tip. They also sell like uh, shampoos where if you have red color hair, you wash your hair with that shampoo and it keeps it um, redder or whatever. Um, I personally don't do that because just washing my hair alone with the coldest water that I can stand, it stays on there pretty good. Um, so yeah, I am going to wash my hair, but I wanted to come and show you what it was looking like um, after the time frame. Um, and my eyebrows, I don't know if you guys can tell, they're a little bit lighter. And if you guys can't tell, I actually put, I put pictures, um, I am also going to style my hair, but that's another video, um, in which I think in that video, that's when I'll really put those, the results. This one was just to like, take it to the process of how I do my own dyeing of my hair. So yeah, until my next video, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.